Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some N++. Uh, I have played N before, and I think I played N plus before. I haven't played this one, though. Um, I believe all, the, all three games are fairly similar, uh, but I haven't played this particular one, so it'll be kind of new. <laughs> Black screen. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Alright, so yeah, um, this series of games, you've, you're a little ninja, and you're doing some really precise platforming, basically. Uh, and that's the whole idea of the game. It's got a level editor, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can make your own stages and share them with your friends and stuff. It's pretty neat. Um, but for the moment, I'm probably just gonna look at the built-in levels. Uh, there's a bunch of options there you can see as well. I don't know what that does. <laughs> it's probably just a joke. <laughs> Uh, some unlockable options too, by the looks of things, which is cool. Uh, anyway, so yeah, um, you can see on the title screen it's just demonstrating what the gameplay is like. You're that little ninja there, and you're trying to make your way to the door after opening it by touching the little switch. So we're just gonna go into the default levels. Oh, here's some information about the game. Um, you can see you can do wall jumps and stuff, uh, various different kinds of jumps. And there's a lot of stuff to it. Um, you do need to do it quickly. There is a time limit based on, like, each set of levels. It says they're 90 seconds to complete each episode of five levels. Uh, so you have to try to um, optimize your time for all of the levels in the episode. Okay, so here's the first one. It's pretty simple. Just don't touch the mines. I'm gonna change the controls. I'm using the A button to jump instead of the B button. It feels wrong. Can I do that? Uh... I have to quit and change that. That's annoying. Should let you change that mid-game. I'm not sure I can actually remap the controls. I hope I can. Because that's really annoying otherwise. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing any control settings. Damn. That's, that's um, super annoying, actually. Um, hmm. Alright, I guess I'll live with it. Um, yeah, you gotta use A button to jump. And B button doesn't even do anything, they could have made a jump as well. But they didn't. So that's immediately kind of disappointing. Um, oops. <laughs> Having some trouble here. There we go. Yeah, um, N Plus was, I think, on the DS, maybe? The original M was a Flash game, it was freeware, which was kind of cool. Uh, I think N Plus was available on the DS, maybe some other platforms. N Plus Plus is on the modern consoles. And it's on Steam as well, I think, so you can actually play it on a regular computer as well, if you wish. Which might be better, because you can remap the controls. Oh my god. I don't understand why so many Switch games think A is the jump button, when B is clearly the jump button. Like, have they seen a Switch controller? <laughs> hmm. <sighs> I 
Anyway, that's the first episode done. Um, I'm gonna have another look just to make sure I didn't miss the settings somewhere. Oh, it tells you about the different game modes and stuff. So that doesn't help. Uh, music, BGM, color, sound, blood, time of bar, retry, delay, retry, flow, explosions, serial numbers, replay, inputs, cop, death sync, number one, episode, reset, level high scores, editor, 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 editor. It's possible one of the locked options lets you change the controls, but I don't know why they would lock that. That doesn't really make sense. Uh, Alright, well, let's let's move on and keep using the wrong button to jump. So yeah, these are tutorial levels, they're not hard or anything, but you get the idea. Um, I am using my new headphones here. They seem to work pretty well. I had to plug them into the TV rather than the Switch, so that the game audio kept coming through the HDMI as well. Which makes sense, I suppose. The fine art of not pressing left and right until after pressing and holding the jump button. Cute. <laughs> Hitting the X actually cancels any fall damage that might have been about to happen, which is handy. So you can fall onto the exit and be safe. digital controls here, like the D-pad works, but the analog also does. I believe just using the D-pad is better because of the way this momentum works in this game. So probably a pro controller would be the best choice to get like a proper D-pad. Oops. Yeah, slopes cancel fall damage in this game for some reason. Very helpful. Oops. Also, yeah, if you fell on the ground, that robot comes at you. 
then we'll do that. The beat button doesn't do anything, so I think they just messed up the controls for the Switch version. <laughs> That's awkward. It's not configurable since it doesn't do anything. It's not like you're remapping it. You're just mapping it in the first place, like they should have done. Yeah, you get the idea, um, I think I wouldn't recommend the Switch version just because the controls are wrong, but I guess it's not that big a deal, it's basically a one button platformer, so having the one button be a different button doesn't mess you up too much, just gotta put your thumb in the right place and you're good. Basically, if you ramp jump while going up the ramp, you go forward a long way. If you ramp jump, ramp jump down, you go up a long way, not forward very far. Uh, is what that's trying to teach, or remind you of, anyway. You can climb up pretty much any wall just by doing a lot of wall jumps. It's pretty cool. I usually you put mines and stuff on walls, you're not supposed to be able to climb up to stop you from doing that. Ooh, new colour. You unlock new colour schemes, like in Downwell. Uh, there's lots of them. Some of them don't look so great. I usually leave it on the default. Uh, Vasquez or Vas Vasque or that one. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a new thing. Uh, these mines show up when you walk over them. I believe they were added in N++. They weren't in the previous games, if I recall correctly. Which I might not. I may be wrong. But yeah, it just means you've got to take a different path each time you go through. Need some more ramp jumping fun. Uh, did that wrong. You do it backwards like this. Go like this. There we go. Oh yeah, bounce blocks. These were in the original. They're pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's sneaky. They've hidden um like activated mines underneath the gold, so when you get the gold mines show up there. Deadly friend. You start getting robots that just follow you around, like that one. Gotta watch out for that. I imagine this can be pretty playable while colorblind. I might switch the saturation down in a second just to see. Yeah, I'll do it now actually. Let's just have a look. 
Boop, there we go. Because it doesn't seem to have anything particularly color dependent. You can still see everything pretty easily without the colors. It's just not as pretty. That was just me being bad at video games. <laughs> see? Easy peasy. Uh, little spring thingies. I think I saw some of these earlier in the first one, which is kind of weird. Because this episode seems to be trying to introduce you to them. Yeah, you'll be crushed on a ceiling if you do that. So watch out for that. Uh... Yeah, this is perfectly playable with the saturation turned down. I don't think it affects the game at all, so that's good. Oh yeah, so uh, rockets are homing, so you gotta watch out. Um... <laughs> You can get them to hit other things instead of you, but it's tricky in a big open room like this with no walls. <sighs> yeah, gonna turn the saturation back now. But yeah, you can you can see that that's totally playable without any colors, no problem. I don't know if the other color schemes work the same way, but it probably doesn't matter too much because this is the default one and you start with it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, the ridiculous deaths were always a pretty major part of the game. Just exploding all over the place. Oh, boost panels. Whoosh. Yeah, you just jump through these and they boost you in whatever direction you're moving, basically. That's a rocket up there. Yep. The different robots, like, there are different colors, but they also have a different design, so it should be fine without the colors if you happen to not be able to see those. Also, there's a laser robot, so watch out for that. Uh, those walls with the two lines, they're like one-way walls, basically. So the lasers can shoot through, but you can't get through them. You gotta follow the way the robots are going because there's no other way to go the other direction, so that's pretty fun. There we go. Whew. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm really surprised that the Switch version of this game doesn't have customizable controls. Because, you know, this game's got a lot of customization options. You can, you know, change the color of various things by using this menu here. Use different headbands and stuff. And you can change what music's playing. And there's lots of different options and stuff that'll let you customize things. It's really strange that controls aren't one of them. Mm. There we go. <laughs> you can see it marks each level with a little gold thingy if uh, you actually got all the gold. Um, which is good, of course, because it means you have more time. Uh, okay, you gotta watch out for those uh, little circle thingies because those... Uh, I'll demonstrate what they do. Yeah, they make cosmic clones. <laughs> so yeah, if you touch one of those, it becomes a cosmic clone, and you have to watch out for that. 
um, because just like in Mario, they follow you and they'll hurt you if they touch you and they copy your moves exactly, and you'll die in one hit in this game, unlike in Galaxy. So, something to watch out for. Here we have a bit of a wall jumping challenge, which is why it's called Who Needs Floors anyway. There we go. Uh, get it? Bullet William? Because in Mario they're called Bullet Bills, and Bill is an abbreviation of William for some reason. I don't really know why, but it is. <laughs> oh, we got a new colour. Oceanographer. So you unlock stuff as you complete parts of the game, as you can see. Ooh. I think it's impossible to get the gold in this level, because it traps you when you, when you do it. Interesting. Here are the Thwomps, Thwompy friends. I forget if they're actually called Thwomps or something else, actually. But they're basically Thwomps. And there are Maverick Thwomps, you can have them go in different directions. What's that thing? Oh, okay, that's what that does. So yeah, you get the idea. Um, oh no, lasers. Yeah, these you basically just have to keep moving around so that the walls block the laser from hitting you. Pretty straightforward. Missed one gold. <laughs> Oh, this is the first time you have to ride on a swamp. You can see only one side is zappy, that's the one that hurts you. You can stand on all three of the other sides. Oh no! It's a cosmic clone, Mario! <laughs> it's the first area that actually forces you to activate them. They're usually placed in narrow hallways like that so that you can't avoid them. Oh, that was a mistake. Yeah, the little, like, narrow doors just open when you go near them. The thicker door, you have to press a button or something. Pretty straightforward. So you have to release that guy, but if you want all the gold, you also have to release that other guy. Uh, who is a Shadow Mario Cosmic Clone who will chase you and etc. I think they're officially called Shadows, but Cosmic Clones is the official term, according to me, a person who has played Galaxy a couple of times. <laughs> uh, here we're using the one-way platforms to help you climb up to the top and then to annoy you because you can't go through them on the way down. Gotta be careful here because this game does have fall damage. Since it's one hit kill everything, the fall damage is instant death. Okay, uh, 
on to these rockets. I think it's the same as before. You just gotta make it hit the walls instead of you, basically. It's not too tricky. These two boosters, like, operate together, I believe. Um... Ah, to give you extra boost. Um, hmm. There we go, you just gotta hold right, because hitting the level exit cancels out your fall damage. Ah! I guess, yeah, that's a machine gun, uh, robot. Basically, when it charges up, you want to get undercover real quick, because it'll just shoot everywhere. Okay, these robots are called the Lookers, because if they, if they, like, fill that eye on the side there sees you, they fly towards you. Uh, I think they're not really called Lookers, but that's what the level name is. So unlike the normal robots that just move, like, in a in a pattern, these ones are affected by your movement, and you gotta watch out. Oops. Thankfully they just move in a straight line when they, when they spot you, they don't actually um, follow you or anything. So if you keep moving you should be fine. There we go. Anyway, yeah, um, you get the idea. I'm not a fan of the controls being wrong, but it's not a big deal in this game because it's a one-button game anyway, um, so I'm not too bothered. I don't know why the controls are wrong. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because the B button isn't even mapped to anything. They could have mapped A and B very easily, but they didn't, apparently. Swamp, uh, get on the swamp better. Yeah, you have to stand on the swamp. <laughs> oh, you actually have to run on the swamp. That's interesting. There we go. Hey, um, what do we got here? I think you have to just jump up real high in order to build up the momentum you need to jump into the middle, basically. Run up one side. Wee, there we go. That's it. Bloop. <laughs> okay, here there's these activatable mines on the side, so you have to be careful. To activate as few as possible, basically. Uh, and make your way back down. Ah, or you do that. Give us a new color again. Yep, now we can play pink. It's called M, but it's just pink. <laughs> okay, so I've played for about a half hour. Uh, I think that's a pretty good spot to stop. I would say that the Switch version of this game is good. Uh, although I wish the B button were a jump button, there's no real reason for it not to be. Um, because it doesn't do anything. They, they haven't mapped the B button to anything. And it's pointless to do that because it could be a jump button and then I'd be much happier with the controls. Apart from that though, it's quite good uh, and I would say that this game is worth playing uh, and I'd recommend it. Uh, you, if you want to you know, get a feel for what these kinds of games are like, I would recommend playing the original end since it's freeware and you can play basically the same thing with a couple of different elements uh, completely free, so that's awesome. Uh, and then if you really like it, you can pick up M++ and get a bunch of extra features and options and customizations and stuff. And it's pretty cool. Uh... So yeah, uh, that's about all i got to say about M++. Uh, I think it's cool. I think, apart from the controls, it's super fun. Um, and the control problem isn't that bad in this game compared to some other games. Uh, like, basically all the Mario's like the, the side-scrolling Mario's that don't let you use B for jump because you need a run button as well and 
they don't work well. This works well. This game is, is very playable with just an A button. So it's okay that they didn't map B as well, even though they easily could have and it annoys me. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope this gave you an idea of what this game's like, at least the easy parts of it. Um, and I hope you are having a good day in general. <laughs> Bye!